you know, I always encourage people to download my videos, share my videos. I don't mind if you make money, like advertising, etc. That's not, not the problem for me. One and peace of the Lord to all of you. Please invite your friends. And today we are going to have some halal fun again. Before we start with our topic, we are going to answer some Abdul immediately. You will notice that uh, the Muslims, you know, because the Muhammadan, the black stone kissers, the muta God worshippers, they come to us always with silly questions and they repeat the same thing, which is even against what their stupid Quran says. As an example. This is an idiot, his name it's me. And for sure it is you. I mean who is going to be? You know? CP worship three gods. So you just said that your stupid prophet and your stupid Quran is a liar. Because the Quran says the Christian they worship one God. And the Quran confirmed the Trinity as one God. So you are a stupid fabricator, liar like your prophet. If we go right now to the Quran, we will see the following. And then every son of Muta. Shut up when you talk to me, you listen, and we will school you. Is this is your stupid Quran or I'm making things up? Hmm? Is it? Your stupid Quran say that the Christian believe that the Messiah is Allah. So if we believe in the Trinity as a three God, as you said, so why your stupid Quran says no, the Christian believe in one God, and that one God is the Messiah. And they think he is Allah. And by the way, your stupid God is wrong. Because even if Muhammad, he meant that we, we say that he is the father, we Christian, we don't believe that the Messiah is the father. So when you have a prophet, he is a son of Muta who was born four years after his father's death, and nobody knows who is his father. And you try to come with something, at least come with something fit with your Quran. And even the verse which says, don't say Trinity, even that verse says that the Trinity mean one God. So why Muslim they lie? Well, they are Muslims, Muhammad, and what you can expect. Now we go to the second Abdul. And by the way, I will open my Skype if there is any Abdul who would like to join us. Open challenge, you know, don't be a coward, be a man. I mean, why Why you say, why you make a comment says, Christian Prince run away from my question. Christian Prince is not answering me. Christian, okay, just call me. And then everybody will say life, your uh, question, your answers, my questions, my answers, you know, and uh, let us see how good you are. But you are potato, you know, you are no match. And that's why you fear it. Uh, we have Abdullah here. Uh, he is saying, uh, this, this is the guy who keeps saying he keep calling me. Guys, this is a son of Muta. He keeps saying, I call you. He posts comment. I call you. You never answer. You see, today is the first day ever you text me, you coward. And the first day ever, huh? You did, you, you exposed yourself. Do you see how stupid you are? So in the chat, he keep in the in the in the comment section, he keeps saying, Christian Prince, I keep calling you, you never answer. I keep calling you, you never answer. Let me show people in the screen how you just get yourself busted. Hmm. When the first time he ever called me? Today, 2.29 a.m. Before that, never. And you stupid coward, are you calling me in a time where I'm not going to be online anyway? I mean, how in the world come to your mind that a person who live in USA is going to answer your call at 2.41 a.m.? Obviously, you don't want to call and let us do it. I'm going to call you right now. <laughs> He's online. Otherwise, the sky will not ring. Let us see what he will do.
He will not answer. Let me lower the sound of the bell. So it doesn't bother you. He will never answer. Is N available? In fact, it says it declined. Look at the son of Muta. If you go in the comment section, he keeps saying, he's running away from me. I keep calling him. Do you see, guys, it says declined? Do you see it says declined? Do you see how covered they are? Not only it's like, you know, maybe he did not answer, maybe he is not next to his phone. It declined, which means he clicked to deny. And the coward he posts. This is why, I, you know, I'm going to block you. You are just a kid. I have no time for stupidity. Get lost, son of Muta. I'm going to convert to Islam one day and get all your wives to be in my bed. Uh... If there is any Muslim, he have the courage and he have the knowledge, please feel free. Now, we go to the second Abdul. Another Abdul, he is a smart Abdul. And this guy is the same. We ask him, why, why you don't call me? He repeat the same thing. Look what he did. This is Zakaria, And we told him to change his name because Zakaria belonged to Yahweh, which is a proving that the God of Islam is a liar. Why? Because if Yahya and Yahweh, both they belong to Yahweh, hmm? Yahya and Zechariah, both of them, they belong to, Yah to, to Yahweh. And then the God of Islam never mentioned such a name. So why Zechariah, his name is Zechariah, and why Yahya, his name is Yahya? So look what he said. I asked CP four questions. This is remind me of the video of the Muslim Abdul, if you remember, when the, the Jews, they came to Muhammad and they asked him four questions. <laughs> and he did not answer anything. Why in the Bible, in Genesis 3.14, says the women will have pain and will give birth because of Eve? Well, you see, look like your mother, when she gave birth to you, she did shit you out, and she have no pain at all because you are like a diarrhea. Isn't it every single woman in the world, when she gave birth, she have a pain? So are you saying to me that this was not the plan of Allah, it was an accident? So here you see the stupidity of the Muhammadan. When they make a comment, their, their comment is the same as a diarrhea. If we ask him, did your mother, when she gave birth to you, did she shit you out as shit as diarrhea? It was so easy huh? because you were a liquid or she have a pain. He will say, no, I wasn't sit, uh, sit okay? I was, uh, you know, she had pain. Okay, so why Allah, he made her have pain? So when you ask a question, you stupid son of Muta, you are denying that Allah, your God, He is the one who designed everything in a certain way. So now we ask you the same question. Why your mother, she have a pain when she gave birth to you? I will tell you why. Because you are a pain in the ass. As simple as that. If you go in the chapter, which he's quoting, and by the way, he asked me too, where, where, when I said uh, uh, that Adam, he had punishment too, this is a penalty for both, it's not for one. He said, where, 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 it says that, where, where, you know, you stupid, you donkey. If you read the same chapter, you will see that God, he spoke to Adam, and he spoke to Eve. So how come you are quoting for us? Verse number 14 by the way, this is not 14, 14 you idiot. You, you, are, you don't even know, need to have, have, I think he's quoting from a website, maybe, mostly. Because what 14? Uh, 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 this is about the snake, not about uh, the verse number 14, the idiot. This is about the snake, potato. And about the snake, we showed you that your own Islamic books, it says that the snake used to have feet and legs like a camel, and then Allah, he cursed her because she allowed shaitan to go inside her mouth and go inside the heaven. So according to your stupid religion, snake, she smuggled shaitan inside the border. And this is stupidity of Muhammad trying to explain how in the world that Allah, he kicked out shaitan before, before it, oh, everything happened. Allah, he kicks shaitan out of, out of heaven. He says to him, get out of it. Let's go to the verse. 
And this is when Shaitan, he refused to bow down to Adam. And this is telling us that Islam is a pagan cult. Because why in the world you order angels and Shaitan? And by the way, he did not order Shaitan, he ordered the angels. And in case you do not know, Shaitan is not an angel in Islam. You know, he's not a fallen angel like in Christianity. This is why some, some Christian, they, they think if Muhammad, he used the same words, we have the same terms and the same conditions. No, this is a false cult religion. It's totally pure pagan. And Muhammad, he used certain names just to fool you. Uh, so Allah, he said to, uh, to Shaitan, get out of it. Get out of it. What Shaitan he did? Uh, this is will be our well, let's see here. <clears throat> Muhammad is the same as a person he's writing a story. The story is not made by him, have nothing to do with him. He is copying somebody else. And because he is, uh, you know, uh, an idiot, he come with his own words. So look what the Quran says here to Muhammad, like a shaitan. I mean, here it's funny that Muhammad is speaking against Shaitan when he is a Shaitan himself. And Allah said to Iblis, get out from this. Between two bracket paradise, do you see it? The Muslims, in order to fix it, they say, no, no, he is not asking him to get out of paradise. He, he was renting a room in Airbnb. <laughs> So after Allah, he punished shaitan and he told him, get out. Then he said to Adam, you and your wife, you live in heaven. You, yo-yo, Muhammad the yo-yo. His story is like a yo-yo, you know? <laughs> you and your wife, you stay in heaven. Hey, Muslims, where, where, where Adam was when Allah created him then? I mean, he's just saying to him, now you enter heaven, now. So where he was? Any Muslim can help us? Any Abdul Teras? Remember this heaven is in the sky. In Christianity, the garden of Adam and Eve, it was on earth, right? already in, they are on earth. So here you see another side of the stupid story, how you created them in heaven. And you are now asking them to enter heaven I mean, who is the donkey here? The answer is Allah. So Allah now, he decided to say to Adam and his wife, go into paradise. But before he says to Adam and wife, get into paradise, he says to, uh, to Allah, to uh, Shaitan, get out of it and you are disgraced and expelled. Okay. And here you see another stupid statement in the verse. He says, whoever of them, mankind will follow you. What mankind? There's only one guy. His name is Adam. And actually, in the, at that moment, uh, uh, I mean, this is the first man, and even uh, Eve does not exist. And then, O oh Adam, thou will you and your wife in paradise and eat from etc. And then suddenly we see the shaitan get in, and then we, we go and see the Muslim interpretation. And we find that in the Muslim interpretation, which we showed yesterday, it says that Shaitan, he come to a snake and he uh, uh, convinced the snake uh, to, uh, 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 to let him get inside her. And so he can get inside the heaven, look like the snake was allowed to go and get out and in. And only Adam, he was you know, restrained in the heaven. So the snake, which is in heaven, in the sky, imagine, I mean, the, the snake in the, in the sky, what the snake is doing there in the house of Allah. All this garbage religion is messed up. You see, if this heaven was in earth, I will say, okay, there is a snake. But this heaven is in heaven. So, Shaitan, he, uh, he whispered into them, you know, he like, you know, 
And what is that? What he said to them? I will make you live forever. I will make you powerful. I will make you just eat from the tree. Okay. And then he, this guy is saying, why Eve, she have to give birth with pain, right? This is the question here, you know, and we are repeating now. When we showed him what Ibn Abbas said, and what his own Islamic tafsir said, the guy he said to me from yesterday, if you remember, I challenge you to show me that this is an authentic hadith, <clears throat> correct? Well, I challenge you to find me one authentic hadith in Islam. In fact, all of Islam is not authentic, and this is what we are doing here. So when a Muslim, he challenged a Christian to prove that the story about Adam and Eve in his books, in his official Islamic website, this is the official Islamic website of Saudi Arabia government. And when you say to me, I challenge you to prove it, to prove what? To prove that this hadith is authentic. That is a clear sign that Islam cannot be trustworthy. And the Muslim, they admitted that Islam is full of lies because they are just saying, we are a bunch of liars. And this is Ibn Abbas, the cousin of Muhammad, who Muhammad, he hired him to explain the Quran. This is not a Jewish guy. This is not a Hindu. This is not a Christian prince. This is Ibn Abbas. And we translated the same verses yesterday or the same statement. And where Ibn Abbas he get his knowledge from? From the Prophet of Allah, which is the Prophet of the devil. If we click translate, let us change the language. We go to English. And now what the, what the answer will be from those Muslims? I challenge you to prove that it is true, authentic. My friend, I am here to prove that nothing is authentic in Islam. Thank you very much for confirming that. Saeed ibn Jubair said, from the authority, do you see the word authority? So if this guy, he has no authority, so why you Muslim ones, Muhammadan, Blackstone, Kisar, Kisar Nan, I'm speaking Indonesian now, Kisar Nan, you are saying the authority of the Abbas if he have no authority. So the guy, he got authority when he have no authority. When Adam ate from the tree and it was forbidden, Allah Almighty, uh, he said to him, why, what made you do that? He said, oh Lord, it's Eve. You know, Eve, she have uh, nice boobs. You know, she start moving her boobs and she convinced, con convinced me. She put the apple between her two boobs and then I was confused which one is the apple. I wanted to bite it. And oops, like it was the apple. I thought it's a boobs, you know. So look what Allah said here to Adam, so, sorry, to Eve, because you did this, you know, you are going to, you know, get a bread net with pain. The translation is not really correct. And you will give it that birth to that your baby with pain against your will. And you will be having menstruation twice a month. And this is again showing the stupidity of the one who made this religion. Since when women, they have twice menstruation. Hmm? So here you see that this was a penalty from the stupid God, the stupid Allah. Then the Abdul, he says to us, why well, you're God? And, uh, and, you know, and, uh, he said, you know, that's not right. Women, what the right, what the, what's wrong with the rest of the rose of women? It's only one woman. She is the one who did that. Well, we ask you the same question. It was only one man who did what he did. So why he's out of heaven and we are out of heaven? What's wrong? And here we need to remember, many uh, Christians do not understand that the reasoning is different for the story. You see, when Adam commits sin, according to Christianity and Judaism, he did something against God's will. In Islam, Adam, he have no choice because the Mohammedan, they believe in destiny. And Adam was forced to commit sin. And we showed you this hadith a thousand times before. But we can show it again and again. Doesn't matter, doesn't make any difference.
And here we understand that in Christianity, Adam is the one who commits sin. In Islam, the one who commit the sin is Allah. And then you ask yourself, how stupid this religion is, if the one who commit the sin is Allah, so why Adam is being punished for sin he did not do? This is a debate and this is very authentic. So if this guy, he said this is not authentic, it's in front of you. It says that Adam and Moses, they have an argument and you know a debate Adam he says to Musa, uh, Musa says to Adam because of you we turned us out of, in a miserable way out of paradise so Moses obviously he is ad adopting the belief of the Christian and this is a clear proof that when the Muslim they say that Moses was a Muslim it's a big fat lie because how this guy he spent his life as a prophet yet he do not know a simple basic belief in the cult of Muhammad the black stone kisser which is the vagina of Allah. How this guy, his name is Moshe. So they stole the name. They stole Adam name. They stole Moshe name. They stole uh, 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 Mary name. They stole uh, Aaron name. They stole Abraham names. And they added to their pagan cult and they mix it all together. And now we have a complete creature. He was born very early and he is dead. So here it says that Adam says to, uh, to, uh, to Moses, how you can blame me for the sin which I did, which I have to do, I must commit, which is written 40 years before my creation. How you can blame me for that? Are you stupid or what? And you will see that the silly Muhammad, the half a brain Muhammad, admitting and agreeing that, yes, well, you know what? Adam, he got the point. It was destiny. It's not his fault. And then you ask yourself all the story then about Adam when was kicked out from heaven. What for? What this drama is about? If we go to the Quran, the Quran, and here we, you know, we uh, we we show this Abdul. It says here that Allah He cursed. He cursed who? He cursed Adam and Eve, and He kicked them out of heaven. Why? because they commit sin. But the funny is that before, you know, that Allah, he forgave them, but yet he kicked them out. This is how stupid this religion is. And then he says, get down one of you and enemy to each other. Which one? Shaitan, which is the snake. So you stupid, you donkey, you, you trying to copy a story from the Bible. You deny the snake, but the snake is there. How Shaitan enter into heaven? According to your religion, he entered into a snake. What he said to the snake, which shaitan now, get down, both of you, you will be enemy to each other. Forever. Forever. Hmm? Both of you. So this was a curse. And he asked why the snake, I mean, what the snake did. You are stupid again. You do not know your religion. This is the problem with those with those with those people. Uh, now, after Allah, uh, He kicked Adam and Eve from heaven. The Muslim he's asking question here, and his question based in, uh, well, what is the fault of the rest of the women, right? To have pain when they give birth. Well, if you are saying why? and this is not right, then you should give a screwdriver to your God, Allah, because your mother, she have pain when she gave birth. So if you are saying to me that this was a blessing from, uh, from your God to your mother, that's mean you are a fool. That's mean literally you are a fool because nobody enjoy pain. And not only pain, women, they can even die in such a uh, like delivery, not just pain. So here you see the hypocrisy of this religion. They are talking as if they are women, they don't have pain when they give delivery. And we just showed him that he, she, her, her birth will be in pain, her menstruation will be in pain, and her even having a baby, like from a man, sleeping with the man is going to be painful. And this is speaking of when the man, he have first time intercourse with the women. This is your God, you stupid. And this is why you don't dare to call me. 
then when you speak about man and you say well God did not punish man you know you are a liar like your prophet again the same chapter you are quoting for us how come you how come Muslims always they see a verse in a chapter they don't see the verse before it or the verse after it it's a miracle this is the skip cult the skip anything is an embarrassment to their questions I cannot believe how stupid this cult is. So he went, and he's quoting the wrong number again. He went and he says, okay, why God hit it to women? And he claimed that nowhere God, he punished Adam. Did you read the verse after it? Hey Muslim, do we have a one Muslim have a dignity? How come you can see a verse, but you cannot see the verse? What exactly your religion is? You see the Lord, he said, from their fruits, you shall know them. If Islam is a religion of ethic and truth, then Muslims will be truthful. This is the same chapter, you coward. You denied that Adam was punished. It's in the front of you. Just jump, you know, one verse. Just one verse, you stupid. And God, he said unto Adam, because though you did, you know, like you broke my command, because you did what you did, you are going to be cursed. The earth you walk in it is cursed. And you will live in sorrow. And your life will be a life of pain. It's in the front of you. He said, nowhere it says that he punished him. He punished them both. And here we ask you, what do you want God to do to Adam? Make him have give birth from his anus so he will have pain too? You can request that. By the way, there's a hadith about a guy. He entered the miswak in his anus to make fun of the miswak. What Allah he did to him? Anyone remember? <laughs> Let me try to find the hadith. In English, maybe we can find it. So this guy, he, he inserted the miswak. He's a Muslim, but he don't like the miswak stuff. So he made fun of it. So Allah, he made him a bretnet, a bradar. And after nine months, he delivered a rat. Was that a blessing from your God, Allah? Or it was a curse, supposedly? So which one is more sin for Allah? Adam and Eve breaking his command or somebody putting a miswak in his anus? And then Allah, he have him pain and he deliver it from his anus and then the guy, he die. Let us see. <laughs> uh. <laughs> I'm just trying to find like a legitimate website because I mean, we show them their official website and they still they say we don't believe in that. It doesn't say that CP. 
This is Ibn Kathir. Uh, I could not open the website. It says a connection. Let us see. All right. Let us see a different website. This one will do. Let us see this one. All right. Islamweb.net. Oh, Christian Prince, this website is a bad website. It's run by the Jews. Actually, the one who own it is the Prime Minister of India. His name is Moody. And this Moody, he changed his mood like Muhammad and the Muhammad. And when they want the website is good, when they want the website is bad. And this is the book of Ibn Kathir. And this is the book of Al-Bidaya wa Nihaya. And this is a chapter seven, volume number 17. And this is page number 469. CP. It doesn't say that, CP. Let us see. Hmm. <laughs> true story, brother. True story. True story. Hmm. So the guy, he put the miswak in his anus and then he took it off. And then he stayed for that after that nine months. Page number 471. And then he gave birth to children's have four legs and they look like a rat and the head have a head of a fish and his anus is the anus of a rabbit are you with me abdul now we will use prophet google translation but let us first give you the link because they will say it doesn't say that cp you know them you know the thing it doesn't say that cp come on just just face it it doesn't say that true story true story you know, this is the link. This is the book of Ibn Kathir. And now we have to open it in Google uh, browser. And we have to use Google translation. So for inserting a miswak in your anus, <laughs> sorry. Uh, all of this drama happened. What will happen if this guy, he ate from the tree of Allah? And you know, guess what? I mean, not only he did, uh, we, we open it here, this is, the, this is the website, in Google Translation. And I'm going to use, uh, for you, I post the link for you. Look for where it says number 22. You see number 22 in the page? And then you count one line, and then here, you know, where it says next to page number 471. All right? I'll read the rest. Let us use Google Translation. Because maybe Christian Prince is lying, brother. He is lying. It doesn't say that, CP, you know? All right. So here it says, he took the miswak, and he put it in his buttocks the translation is not coming correct and then after nine months later he gave birth to a son the translation again is not correct he have description of a rat he looked like a rat with four legs and his head like the head of a fish and his back was like the back this is false translation it was his anus his anus is the same anus as a, as a rabbit and then this man he did live for two days after that and he died in the third this is your books and now what he will say it doesn't say that, CP. I challenge you to prove that this is authentic story. Our friend, nothing is authentic in Islam. We are here to laugh at your prophet. You remember that. So when you say it's not authentic, you are just making, giving us a bigger laugh because you confirm what we are doing. It's true. Nothing in Islam is authentic. 
This is a big fat lie, the same as the fat lie in the ass of Muhammad. I mean, the guy, he insert a miswak in his anus and then he got a bread net. Since, do you see, do you, do you think that the, the anus, I mean, do you think the miswak have a sperm brother? You know what looked like the miswak is a penis. Is that a miracle, brother? Huh? So the guy, he insert a piece of wood in his anus, and then the miswak, he have ejaculation. He could not resist the temptation. And then the guy, he have womb. I mean, the guy is a man. And the location is his anus, not his vagina. That your God, he made him have a baby and the baby looked like a rat. And what is killing me, why his head like a fish? And why his anus like a rabbit? Is that a specific thing about rabbit anus? Let me search for rabbit anus. Hold on, guys. Give me a second. I want to see what is like. It must be something special in the rabbit in anus. But now how we can find the rabbit showing his anus. I mean, it's not. there's no porn website for rabbits. Otherwise, we will go there for the sake of education. Rabbit. I will search for a rabbit, and now we have to get lucky and see a rabbit showing his ass. How in the world I will find such a rabbit now? I'm looking, I mean, there's tons of pictures, but I don't see anyone showing his, 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 his ass. All the pictures is kind of for his head, for his face. Hey, come on, not even one of you rabbits, shame on you. They must be very conservative, those rabbits. I'm, I'm telling you, I cannot find one rabbit showing his ass. I mean, I, I don't know what I know what to do. I give up. I give up. You know, I'm looking at all the rabbits here. You know, not even one of them is showing his. Uh, how how what how we can solve this problem now? Rabbit anus. What what that mean? Why why Allah he chose rabbit uh, anus for his anus? You see, Allah, he replaced the body part of a human being and suddenly now his head is a head of a fish. Let us see, uh, uh, we can find the head of the fish. Hold on. I mean, this is easier. So Allah, he made him have a child. I mean, what is the, the fault of the child? Aren't you the one who speak about like, okay, the father, he did something wrong. Why the child, he have a head of a fish? Don't you think this is a fishy story? Very fishy. Brothers and sisters, this is the head of the baby, the guy he gave. He looked like a rat. How he looked like a rat and he have a head of a fish. No comment. No comment. Okay, let us continue with the with the madness of the Abdul, who they are going in denial. I hope you guys you did save the reference. We gave you about the anus story, which is a true story, by the way. And may Allah protect the anus of every Muslim. Please don't make fun of the Quran or the Miswak, otherwise your anus at risk. Don't forget to put insurance in your anus. And by the way, commercial break, if you would like to have insurance over your anus and you are a Muslim, please call anus.com insurance. You, we will cover all your anus expenses in case you need to do plastic surgery. For Allah, he changed the look of your anus to make it like a rabbit. We can send you to Thailand and they are the best in changing your anus to anything you want. You can make it even a grocery store. You can make it even a tree. In fact, we can make it look like a cake. It is a piece of cake signed with our insurance and you will get the best deal. Call now, one Allah anus. Now, here it says, the guy respond by showing Baghawi and I ask him a simple question. What the evidence of he have authentic? The Joker respond by saying, this is a Muslim book. So it is authentic. No, I did not say that. I said, this is a Muslim book. So you are the one who should prove it is authentic, you stupid. Because why you put it in your book and this is your biggest scholar if it is not authentic? I mean, the video is still there. I did laugh at you and I said, look at this guy. He is asking a Christian to prove that what is written in his book is authentic. 
<laughs> Isn't this is hilarious? I mean, we show them what is in their books, and those are the highest scholars. Al Baghawi is a top, top, top notch, not like those potatoes in YouTube. What he do? He says, uh, "It's your book." Yeah, it's your book. And this is your official government website. And this is exist in many tafsir. So how that is my problem? If it is not authentic, mean we need to question how legitimate Islam is. Because if you must then believe that you lie about your prophet and you explain the Quran by lying about your prophet, that means you are a bunch of liars and nobody can trust Muslims, neither Islam. This is your sheikh from Saudi Arabia. Now he will say to me, hey, this guy is a stupid. He does not know what he's talking about. So he is in the Qatari official TV. Do you see the sign? Guys, do you see the sign in the corner? This is the official TV of Qatar. You can go check it out. Government. Do you see it? And the name of the program, those who are very established with knowledge, those are the scholars. So this program for scholars. So they are asking him about Adam and Eve and what happened. And I will translate. So they say that Allah, he punished the snake by taking off her legs. As we showed you in the interpretation, it says that the snake, she used to have legs of a camel. And then Allah, he punished her by taking off her legs. So she's, she go down in her belly and because she allowed the shaitan to go inside her. Continue. And Eve, Hawa. From the appearance, according to the Sunnah, she is the one who advised Adam, our father Adam, to eat. So Allah, he punished her by making her having period. And now he will say, it doesn't say that, CP. So all your scholars say what is written in the website except you because you are a potato in YouTube and you can say whatever you want. Now we go to different thing. He says, he said Jeremiah 20 was a guy who thought that he was powerful and God showed him that he is nothing. Anyone who read Jeremiah would be die laughing at him. Uh, it's And he says, he, you know, he ran away. Now, but let's stop here. And then he skipped uh, Ezekiel 14. You stupid, you gave me a, a Jeremiah. I read Ezekiel. If we go right now to Jeremiah, everybody will laugh at you. Jeremiah was complaining that he could not do it alone. He thought if he screamed, if he thought he thought if he warned them, he thought if he can, uh, you know, uh, speak loud against their action, they will listen. And if you go actually to Jeremiah, and you read all the way to the end, he is even wondering why even he is exist. He believed that the day he came to existence, it was a very bad day. Because he is suffering from failure. His people, they start worshipping idols. <clears throat> and he could not you know, prevent them from doing that. So if we go to Jeremiah right now, and we will do it in the front of everybody. And then he will come and he will pose the same thing with Muslims. You know? And by the way, the same question, they will ask it a million times in the coming million year. And they will never stop even you answer them doesn't matter how many time because they're muhammad and what do you expect you know the one who allah he made their anus as a rabbit anus what do you expect from such a religion and they speak about logic uh so if we go to jeremiah chapter 20 the first question you ask yourself when the Muhammadan, he did read Jeremiah, verse number seven. How come he did not see all the chapter? Did he see it really? Or he is in purpose, he will not see? Jeremiah is struggling that his people are not listening. 
The king of the Babylon is coming and advancing, and people are not listening. He keep warning, they don't listen. And then he is saying, I thought I can do it alone. Lord has deceived me, and I was deceived. I thought I am stronger. But you are stronger than I. So this is what all the verse is saying. I thought I'm strong, but you are stronger than I. So what the verse is saying, I am doing my work as a man. And now I realized that my work as a man will not be good enough if my work as a man not the strength of God. And this is, can be found in the book of Psalm 127, where the builders, they are building, but for nothing. You build, you build the palace, you build the castle, you build the wall to protect your city, but that will not help you because you are not building by the command of God. You are not successful by God's success. So if we go to, to the book of Psalm, let me open it. Give me a second. Except the Lord build the house, the labor is in vain. They build it, except the Lord keep the city, the watchman, the one who is God, the watchman, the guard, the soldiers, their watch is in vain if you don't have God protection. In vain for you to rise up early. So all that, it's a very uh, short, short uh, uh, chapter here. All what it says that anything, if those people are not working by God will, then nothing will be succeed. It's not like you, you know, you warn them or not warn them. They don't listen to God. They don't, they don't want God. And because they don't want God, even Jeremiah, he is wishing that he never exists if you go down. You will see that he is praising the Lord and he is saying, Cursed be the man who brought tidings to my father, saying, I am a man, a child born unto thee. So supposedly it's been good news. I'm born, you know, here we go. My father should be glad, glad. But the fact I am really unhappy, I'm really desperate. I'm really unsuccessful because my people are not listening. So you coward, you try to manipulate things. And look here, the deception we are talking about here, it is the man saying, you deceive me. And the man saying what he meant that I thought I am strong, but you are stronger than I. So he's asking God for help. And if you flip the page, you will find that what God, he said to him after that. The holy chapter is about Jeremiah crying out, feeling sorry for his existence. He wished that he never exist. He's wondering, is he a child of shame? Why those things happening to me? That's all. But the Muhammadan, who they are trying to cover, that Allah, he deceive believers. This is not about deceiving believers. This is about a guy. He is speaking to the Lord, saying, I am being deceived. I thought I can build by myself. I can be the watcher by myself. I can be the voice for them as a prophet by myself, I can do, I can do, but you are stronger than me, Lord. So he's begging the Lord for help. That's the, the whole chapter is saying. But because you are a coward like your prophet, nothing in you. Then he says, he ran away from the Amalekite extermination First Samuel 15, 
son of Mutah, what if I show you this story in your Quran? What you will do now? You will say it's a week? <laughs> you see those donkeys, they are copying from Didat. Didat is a donkey who do not know what is in the Quran. This is why he made fun of the Bible. God created the sun in the fourth day. Uh, uh, you know, uh, he made fun of, of Israel fighting with the, uh, struggling with God. So he said, what the heck is that? But this is what the Quran is saying. The Quran is saying his name is Israel. The second you accept the name, that means you accepted the story. Uh, Let us see the story here. Again, this guy here do not know that the story of Samuel is in his Quran. Obviously, those people, they never read their book. They are just the same as the Quran says, like a donkey carrying the books in the top of his back. Uh, so if we go in the Quran, let us see. Uh, <clears throat> if we go here, actually, the story of Talut. Potatoes didn't know what their book is about. I never saw a Muslim, actually, he knows what he's talking about. This is a chapter two in the Quran. Do you see the name Abdul? Do you see the name? The Muhammadan, they think that this story never exists in their book. So they start making fun of it. Call me, call me, potato. Let me let me block you from the chat so you can call me. You are a son of Muta. You said, read carefully, this is your comment. Don't change your comment now. Here we go, we got you busted. Now you feel the heat, don't you? This guy called me liar. I said, here we go, it says, he ran away from the Amalekite em extermination in Samuel 115. So this is, was your comment, son of Muta. Now I am showing you that your God Allah, he ordered some Samuel to kill every single one of them. So now what you will do, you will change your statement. Too bad. You see, last time you made a comment, I look for it, you delete it. Yesterday I tried to find the comment, it's gone. Now I took a screenshot for that purpose because I know the second I start talking, you will, you know, you will notice that you are stupid and you will go and you delete your comment. And this is why I took a screenshot of your silly comment. So, according to you, the story in First Samuel is an ugly, disgusting story. Now, so if the story is exist in the Quran and in the Hadith, that means you are a fraud like your prophet and you just made fun of your God Allah. I see I mean, somebody trying to call me. Let us see who. Ah, somebody saying he can bust me. Usually the one who says that, those are kids, you know. Let us see. Potato, he called me so I can bust you and he declined the call. Do you see? Hey Zachariah, be a man once in your lifetime. Otherwise, somebody will put muswak in your anus and then you will give birth to a rat. Face the truth, brother. It's coming. Today and always here, you are like a rat because you don't dare to call me. The same as all Muslims who call themselves a cleric or those who have a channels. They don't dare to call me and they will not dare to give me their Skype to call them. So look what happened now, what we will do. It turned to be 
that it is Allah who order some will to kill those people. And if you go in the verse, actually, you will see that they did not. And this is in total agreement, not only in this story here in the Quran about Samuel, the same total agreement about the story when Allah, he ordered the Jews to kill all the Palestinians. Allah, he ordered the Jews to kill every single Palestinian in order to take the land. Quran, chapter 5, verse number 21. Open the interpretation of your choice and you will die laughing. So he said to them, go there, fight them, and never, never turn back, which means kill them all. And then the Palestinian, sorry, the, 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 the Jews, they said to Moses, oh, those people are strong. We will not go and fight them. We will not. You go, you go, you go. Then two men, and the Muslim, they add in names, is not in the Quran, Joshua and Caleb, they said to Moses, let us assault them. Let us do jihad. The rest they refuse. And because the people of Moses, they refuse to go and fight, Allah, he punished them, and he made them lose their way for 40 years in the desert. So Muhammad, he stole a story from the Old Testament. He had his own spice as usual. He fabricate as he wish. And we know what happened next. We are laughing at his story. Because Muhammad obviously and his God do not know that after some time, those who so-called Palestinian, which is not the same people, by the way, they will become Muslims. They literally will become Muslims. So who is the one who promised the land? And who is the one who made the order to kill every single Palestinian? It was Allah. Now we go back to the other verse. Here the story is coming in a very weird way. You know, and uh, when the Muslim they tried to fix uh, a story, uh, you know, look, they, they added names. It's not in the Quran. And this is telling you that the Quran is a stupid book. Okay, how in the world now a Muslim, he is reading this story here, in the chapter of the cow, of the, as if the Jews are, there are a bunch of uh, people who worship uh, cows. Uh, and by the way, this is not the reason the cow is called cow. Muhammad, he claimed that Allah, he told Moses to make a, a beef, you know, kill, he killed a cow and uh, and beat a guy who's dead. So the cow will come, the, the person will come back to life and will tell the story. But look what the Muslim, they do in order to fix the stupidity of the Quran. The Muslim, they say that the Quran is enough by itself to tell the story, any story. So why we are adding Samuel? It's not there. The answer would be, well, it's about Samuel. Okay, the question is, why the stupid Allah, Aka Muhammad, did not put the name? I will tell you why. Because Muhammad did not know how to pronounce the name, how to say the name. The name is very hard for him. So he skipped the name. It's like you, you know, you say to Christian Prince, say the word abundant. The Christian Prince, abundant, what is that? So I skip it. I will skip it from reading it because it's an embarrassment. I do not know how to read it. Otherwise, I challenge the Muslims why he is mentioning the name Moses, but he don't mention the name Samuel. I mean, here we go. He's, he's saying names. Any Muhammadan? No Muhammadan. 
They have no answer. It's a counterfeit religion. And now if we go and read the interpretation for this chapter, what the Muslim will say? It doesn't say that, CP. We don't accept that, CP. So what do you Muslims accept? Where we can find your religion? When the Quran says that those people they said, tell your God to send us an angel to fight. Fight who? And who was the one who was ordering to fight and kill? And kill who? It was the people you are talking about. And to kill them all and take the land. So in chapter 5, verse number 21, it says, Go and kill every single one of them and never come back. In chapter 2, verse number 244, actually, if you can, you can go back, you will see. Uh, uh, Allah is saying to them, Don't you see what happened to those people? And then he is quoting the story. Those people, they've been kicked out from their houses. The enemy, they took their children. To the point there is only one woman. She is descendant from the prophet. She have a child. And that is Samuel. The Jews, they did hide her so she can give birth. Any Muslim, he have an objection. Any Muslim, he had an objection. Objection is open. Objection opportunity. I can open any interpretation you wish and then you will die laughing at your stupidity. All those names, we cannot find them in the Quran, but the names are coming one after one. Here it says that Al-Amaliqa, and those are the ones you are talking about, They've been victorious over the children of Israel and they killed a lot of them and from their land and they took a lot of their women and their children and they took their children as slaves and they have 40 kings and they made them pay jizya and they took their Torah and the Israeli they found from them all kind of painful life And because they don't have a prophet to lead them, there was only one woman. She is going to give birth soon. So they took her and they put her in the house of a nun. And here you see the stupidity of Muhammad. There was a nun in the Jewish time. They put her in the house of a nun. May Allah nun you. And when she gave birth, you know, they will exchange the baby just to hide the baby. And then this woman, she was praying to, uh, to Allah to give her a boy. And then she gave birth to a boy. His name is Ishmael. 
And then the rest of the story that, uh, you know, Allah told him to go and do jihad and fight them and kill them. And then they said to him, well, why you don't ask your God to send us an angel to fight for his sake? So, I mean, why us, you know? And then he says, Kutiba alaykum al-qital. Fighting and doing jihad is a destiny. Why you don't fight? And they said, why we will do so? Where this story came from? We go to the Old Testament, we will find that Muhammad is trying his best to copy a story in the Old Testament. And now we knew what happened to those people. The most important is that now you got busted. Those people, they've been, their wives been taken, they raped their women, they took their children, they took their Torah, and they took their land. And Allah told them to go and kill them. In verse 246, when Allah, he said to them, go and do jihad and kill them. What they said, why don't appoint, why Allah don't appoint, uh, you know, here it says a king, Malakan as a king. Why Allah don't appoint a king to fight? We will fight for Allah. So if Allah, he appoint a king, they claim now that the, the problem is we don't have a king. And Allah said to them, why you refrain from fighting as fighting was an obligation for you? For what purpose? For those who kick you out from your homes and they took your children and your family taken as captive. So when a stupid son of Muta, he says, why you don't answer about the, you know, the, 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 the killing of the Amalekite and you know, you know, here we go, it's in the Quran. Those people, they are defending themselves. If we ask the Muslims, why, why Muhammad was fighting the Jews? They say, oh, we are defending ourselves. Okay, what you did? We take their children and we take their wives. And then Muhammad, isn't it Muhammad who says, if I've been victorious, I will cleanse the Arabian Peninsula from Christians and Jews. And until now, there is zero citizen in Saudi Arabia. He is a Christian or a Jew. It's not allowed. What happened to them? They killed them all. So when Muhammad and he made a claim, we laugh at his claim because he is screwing his God. This is new religion. And this is your Quran. You see, you might say that the interpretation, I don't like it, I don't accept it, which is more laughable anyway, because what you Muslims accept then? If your own books is not accepted, so what you accept? What the Muslim accept? Nothing. Muslims accept only things will make them look uh, good today. Those things was fine for the last 1400 years. And the Muslim, they don't like anything in the Bible. So they start throwing rocks, but they don't know that their prophet is a fraud. He copied tons of stories. So you better watch your step, Abdul. You step at your prophet now. This is exactly what you just did. You did a step on your prophet's face and your God tale when you ask this question. And this is, here we go, this is the official government website of the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. And you can open Ibn Kathir, you can open at tabari you can open, open whatever you want. Now, the title today of our video is what? The title of our video is about women or half a brain. How Muslims, you know, if we ask Muslims, okay, when Muhammad, he said that the majority of mankind are women. Was that, 
You see, when the Muslim, he question why women, they will have pain when they give birth. Which one is more important? That God, he cursed the women that most of them, they will go to hell or giving birth. Muhammad, he came to the women and he said that he went when he went up to heaven, he saw that the majority of the dwellers of hell are women. The majority of what? People of, of hellfire are females. Muslims, is that a blessing from Allah or it is a curse from Allah? You will see with me that according to Muhammad, the reason they will go to hell because Allah, he made them in a certain nature. What is the nature they have? They have half a brain. They have a lack of wisdom and intellect and intelligence. Have you ever heard of a stupid religion like this before? So if this is true, which is not, because there's, you know, depend, women can be smarter than men and men can be smarter than women, depend, they're individuals. But if this is true, who is the one who made the women suffer from lack of intellect? Who is the one who created the women? The Muslim, they will say Allah. Okay. So who is the one behind this defect? If it's exist, Allah. So how in the world, you stupid Muhammad, you say that the women, they have a lack of intellect and wisdom, and that is going to be for them the reason to go to hell. And not only that, he said, because you are ungrateful. Remember, we're not talking about one woman. We are talking about all women. Only exception of them, few, they are not like that. So the majority are like that. But here you see the stupidity. Aisha and Hafsa, they complain about Muhammad. All the wives of Muhammad, they complain about Muhammad. So if the woman is ungrateful for her husband, well, that's mean. All women and Aisha is the best of them, according to Muhammad. If we go to Hadith, we will find the following. Muhammad, he claimed that all women are as bad except three women. And this is Sahir Bukhari. Among the men, there's a lot of men, they reach perfection. This is the men situation. But from the women, there's only three. Now what this Abdu will say, this is not authentic. Well, this is Al Bukhari. Al Bukhari, Al Bukhari, Al Bukhari, Al Tirmidhi, Sahih, Sahih, Sahih. So, according to Muhammad, there is only three women. They were perfect. But isn't it Aisha and Hafsa the one who the Quran says Sagat Aymanahum, which means they became kuffar? So only three women, and here the funny Muhammad, by the way, Allah He promised him He would sleep with those two women, which is the uh, you know the, the the wife of the Pharaoh 
I mean, imagine this guy, he's mentally ill. Why in the world Allah will make you marry the wife of the Pharaoh? And why Mary? He's sick. He's literally sick. He's a pervert. So this guy, he looked for all famous names in his time. The wife of the Pharaoh. And by the way, you ask the Muslims, there's a guy, his name is Adnan Rashid. He made a video amazing how Allah Prophet and how Allah in the Quran, how he announced that the, 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 the title of the Pharaoh, you idiot. Muhammad, he think his name is a Pharaoh, not his title. This is why it says the wife of Pharaoh. The wife of Pharaoh. And this is why the Quran says, Alu Pharaoh. Al is a word you put before a name. So if we go right now to the Quran, we will see if we type the word Al. I will type it in the front of you. Ali Pharaoh. You see it in yellow. Al. Ali Pharaoh. Then Ali Moses. Moses is a name of individual. So the word Al come before the individual name, not a title. Ali Pharaoh. Ali Pharaoh. Ali Ibrahim. Do you see how easy to confirm the stupidity of Muhammad? So he thought that Pharaoh is a name of a person. So now he is adding the word Al before the name because he is ignorant. And the Muslim, they told the truth. This guy is illiterate, but not necessarily about writing and reading. He is illiterate. He is just an you know, ignorant, stupid. So going back to the Hadith, Muhammad, he claimed that only three women they are perfect, and the rest are garbage. And one of them is Aisha, who the Quran says that Aisha, she was a bad woman. Chapter 66, verse number 4. If you two wives of the Prophet of Allah, namely Aisha and Hafsa, turn into repentance to Allah, so how those are perfect? I mean, they are so bad to the point Allah, He made the verses about how bad they were. And not only that, Allah, He threatened them to be divorced. Do you see it? So do you see how we got Muhammad busted? How he say three women are the most, and they are perfect. They reach the point of perfection. So maybe Muhammad was talking about Aisha, she is perfect in sex. Because he is a child molester. Now going back, most of women, they will go to hell for a reason. YouTube is telling me my uh, my streaming and I don't have a good quality internet. No, I have. I don't know. Okay. Let us hope it's going to be fine. So, if we go to the Hadith, Muhammad, he claimed that the reason for women to go to hell, three reasons. They are ungrateful to their husband. And we just saw Aisha. She's ungrateful to her husband. And Hafsa. And actually all the wives. And we can show the reference in the Hadith. And we did already. And the second reason, because they have lack of intellect and wisdom. Read carefully. He says, you curse too much and ungrateful to your spouse. I have seen none lacking in common sense and failing in religion. But robbing the wisdom of the wise. A woman, she said to him, what is our, what's wrong with our common sense and religion? Muhammad, he said, the evidence for that, that one, uh, one man is equal to two women to be witness. So women are stupid. 
In fact, by the way, the translation here lacks sense. This is a false translation. It's about intellect. It's about intelligence. It's about you have half a brain, not uh, what they're saying, common sense. Just to change the translator, here we go. We just changed the same, it's the same thing. Look how they lie in the translation trying to duct tape the, uh, the, their prophet. He said, you, cur you frequently are, uh, uh, you curse frequently and are ungrateful to your husband. I have not seen more anyone, anyone more deficient in intelligent and religion than you. And remember, Muhammad is not speaking to a woman. He's speaking to all women. He's making a speech to all the Muslims present. I did not see anyone have more lack of the and, de and deficient in intelligence and religion more than you. A woman, she was there, and obviously she is smart. But what she can do, you know, the idiot Muhammad will kill her. She said, oh, "Okay, oh, so what? Oh, what? Oh, what is the problem?" <laughs> Muhammad, he, he decided to prove it to them. He said, isn't it you have two women equal to one man in the court to witness? Isn't it that you Muslim women, they said to him, what is our, what our, what our religion? I mean, we are Muslim like everybody. He said, don't you have your period? Have you ever heard of a stupid religion says that because a woman she have her period, she have deficiency in religion? And then you ask yourself, well, okay, who is the one who made the women have period? The Muhammadan, they say, Allah. Then I have to say, you are a stupid period. So why that will make her go to hell if menstruation is not a choice? Did she go to the refrigerator and she grabbed some blood and she had menstruation? And here you see that Muhammad is describing menstruation as a curse. She is from the beginning a bad person. For all women have the same problem, which is what? They have a deficiency in religion, which is the ministration. And remember, Muhammad is trying to explain why they will go to hell. You see, he's not describing why you don't, uh, you know, we don't give you a job here or there because you have ministration, why you cannot be an imam. No, no, no. He's talking, you will go to hell. So, number one reason, you are ungrateful, but Aisha is ungrateful. And by the way, that, the story of Aisha, that she was ungrateful, is a proof the Quran again to be false. Why? Because the Quran said, Allah make a destiny, or he made a destiny, that bad women, they marry only bad men. It's a destiny, brother. It's a destiny. Allah is talking what you can say. Chapter 24, verse number 26, and here you see the stupid translation. Suddenly the word women became a statement. The bad women became statement. You know, yesterday I was walking and I saw a very beautiful statement walking down the road. Hey, Muhammad, what happened to your Quran? Women, they became a statement. I mean, what you people, what what do you do? How you translate the Quran? What software you use? By the statement, we change the translation. Let us see. Let us go to Big Tal. By the statement, huh? What a bad, stupid religion. Look, 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 look. The bad statement turned to be a vile woman. Ma Amar Rabbi Aman. That is a miracle. And the Muslim, they say, we never corrupt the Quran, but isn't it given false translation is a corruption? How in the world, the one, the, the bad women, she became bad statement. If there is any bad statement lady here, 
this is a, what, what the heck is this? Bad statement. Here we go. Solve the problem. It turned to be that bad women, they are bad. bad. So look what the stupid Muhammad said in the Quran. Bad women, they marry bad men. And bad men, they marry bad women. And here showing you again the stupidity. I mean, if you just said bad women, they marry bad men. Why you need to repeat? And bad men, they marry bad women. What? It's the same, you stupid. It's a destiny, that's it. Why are you repeating the thing twice? And then good women for good men. Okay, 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 that's wonderful. So Allah, he made only good women marry good men. So how in the world Aisha turned to be a bad ass? And how Hafsa is the same? And how the rest of the wives of Muhammad, they are fighting with Muhammad? Hmm? Even the Quran says that Allah, you know, Allah and the angels, they are going to take side with Muhammad against Aisha and Hafsa. I mean, do you see what kind of religion? What so Aisha was so bad to the point. Muhammad, he need the support of Allah. Let me change the translation here. It's too much uh, shish kebab. We want to make it lit, uh, lit, less words so people can see it. Huh? Here we go. You see, the subhanallah, ass of Allah, how the Quran shrink in, in one click. It was wrong, long bracket. So if you turn into repentance to him, your heart are indeed inclined. But if you back each other, you filthy son of Mutaz, those females, Hafsa and Aisha, against him, him who prophet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he is God on earth. Do you know what will happen if you do that? Truly. Truly, truly, Allah is his protector. And Zabril. Are we done? No. I mean, Allah and Zabril is not enough. We are talking about two women. They have ten fingers. Guys, you don't understand the threat now Muhammad is suffering from. I'm telling you, the threat is beyond your imagination. This guy, Christian Prince, he might say to you things to make fun, but the fact, the threat is big. <clears throat> We are talking about two women, not one. And those two women, they had ten fingers. In case you do not know what ten fingers mean for a female, ask Muhammad. Their nails is so sharp and so long and there is no way the prophet of Allah alone can stand a second with them brother and sisters just think about it for a second your wife her hands in your neck and you are the messenger of Allah peaceful man you can only you kill women children you rape them but you don't your women they are so strong what you would do put yourself in his shoes so he needed a very extra support from Allah from Jibreel and not only that all the believers in the world all of this to fight two women they are five foot four foot tall i think by the way i heard i'm not sure really i'm not really sure to be honest with you i cannot confirm this it's authentic or not i heard that i she have a black belt and i heard that hafsa she was playing kung fu actually some the companions they claim that Hafsa, she was the cousin of a Bruce Lee. 
And this is why it says that in the hadith says that Hafsa she said to the Prophet, he wo he, which is subhanAllah in Chinese. And the funny is the Muslim they say that a guy his George his name is George Bernard Cho. He said in a book which nobody can find, it's a fabrication. Nowhere. Actually, George Bernard Shaw speak against Muhammad. They made an article saying Famous people speak about the Prophet. George Bernard Shaw, he said, the Prophet, he can solve all the problems in the world in the morning, during the time of drinking his coffee. And the guy is making popo in his pant because of two wives. And they're proven in front of you. To the point, he need Allah to stand with him. To do what? A protector. Do you see the protector? I mean, this world is, 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 is really a protector. Is Allah enough? No. We need Jibreel too. I have 600 wings because it's hot. Those women are very hot. You know? Is that enough? No. Osama bin Laden, Az Zawahiri, and they are dead, but we will bring them back. Don't worry. And every single terrorist, ISIS, Al Qaeda, all and furthermore, all the angels. They will do what? They will back him up, brother. And now, what the Abdul will say in the comment section? It is a Daif Quran. Now we go back that bad women for bad men. So the Quran lie. Correct? Because if Allah made destiny that bad women, they marry only bad men, the only way for this to be true, that Muhammad is a bad man. Is that correct? Actually, I found a video of Yasser Qadi. He is trying to fix it. And he made it more blind. Hold on, let me go back. Listen, listen, it is misunderstood, and now the smart ass Yasser Qadi is going to fix it. And you will see how stupid he is. He just confirmed what he said is misunderstood. Listen carefully. Guys, listen carefully how this coward is trying to fix it. It says in the front of us on the screen, and he is the one who is posting it. I saw the most of inhabitants of the hell are women. And he's saying, well, uh, there's no sound. Uh, sorry for that. Okay, let me play it again. It's my fault. It's my fault. The women's section gave them a small, you know, sermon, and in that he had a small phrase in there, you know, a sentence in there, in which he said that, uh, "Oh, uh, groups of women, uh, fear Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, and you know, uh, guard yourselves against Jahannam. For indeed, I saw that the majority of the people of Jahannam were women, and then he encouraged them to give." The funny he said it is a small sentence there small sentence well the whole story here is a small sentence he is explaining there is a debate do you see the cowardness of those religion it's a small sentence small sentence but he explained you have a half brain you have administration you have and now he's saying 
Well, if uh, if what? Sadaqa and charity. Now, this is misunderstood by, unfortunately, too many people uh, to indicate or to, to assume that a majority of women will go to Jahannam. Let us be very clear here. The fact that the majority of Jahannam will be women does not imply that the majority of women will go to Jahannam. If What the heck? People, did you hear what I heard? He just said, the fact that the majority of people of hell are women does not imply that the majority of women, they will be in hell. What? <laughs> listen, listen carefully. This is Yasir Qadi, he's trying to be a philosopher. The fact that the majority of hell fire of Jahannam are women does not imply that the majority of women are going to go to hell. <laughs> yes, sir, Kadi, I have a question for you. What kind of hashish you are talking, man? Taking my friend, what did you did you smoke something before you go live on air or something? How in the world you say that? So where Allah he got the women from? The majority of hellfire are women. Women. Then you say it doesn't imply that the majority of women they will go to hell. So who is that? <laughs> of Jahannam will be women does not imply that the majority of women will go to Jahannam. If in one area or one location, you have a majority of people of, let's say, one profession, it does... What one location? He's speaking, he said women, women, women. He did not say, hey, you. Do you see the stupidity? And he described things all women have, goes for all women. All women, they don't allow, they aren't allowed to be a witness in the court in the case of capital punishment, only in the case of borrowing money. And two women only equal to one man if the Muslim accept those two women. They have to examine them because the Quran says that they are stupid. And women, all women who have menstruation, all women have menstruation. I mean, unless like some people, maybe they have like a, uh, like um, some illness or something. So, but Muhammad make it clear, all women, and he's speaking about the only place people will go to. There's two places. There's heaven, there's hell. And he said the majority of hellfire are women. So those women are coming from where then? If not all women, they are going to a majority of them. And now he tried to fix it even better. It does not mean that that profession represents the majority of all of mankind. Unless and until we are told the statistics of Jannah, this in and of itself is meaningless. Unless he's been told that the statistic, he just told you the majority. Who cares if it is 70% or 80% now? You're a prophet, he just said the majority. I mean, do we need even the percentage? He just said the majority, the majority mean the majority. What is static? English when it comes to most women or most men going to heaven or hell, the statistic, uh, the statistic becomes meaningless. In fact, we learn uh, that from the earliest of times, many of the Sahaba and early scholars, they said that both Jannah and Jahannam shall have more women in it. And this is based on a hadith in Sahih Muslim that Muhammad ibn Sirin said that the men and the women began having a debate amongst themselves, which one shall be more in Jannah? And so there's this debate going on until finally uh, they asked Abu Huraira radiallahu an, and Abu Huraira used as an evidence that every single man shall be given at least two wives in Jannah. You see the donkey? But those are women are made for sex in heaven. They are not women from this earth, you donkey. They are talking about the whore. Guys, do you see the stupidity? He want to now prove the opposite, that the majority of people, actually, this is what I said before. Muhammad is a stupid. When Muhammad, he promised them 72. 
72, not on not two, 72. So how the majority of hellfire, there will be women when you will be short in number? Is the number of men now is one man to 72 women? Actually, there's a hadith. Uh, maybe I need to find it. That will be laughable. Maybe a different time. But here they see the stupidity. This guy, he just jumped to speak about the virgin, which Allah will make in heaven, and he will give them to the Muslims. And he says, well, you know what? The women in heaven, they will be more. But those are not the women from this earth, you coward. So do you see how they try to fix and how they lie? The women in heaven, the whore, is in heaven. They are not included in this argument. They are not in this earth. Muhammad is not speaking to them. Uh, let us see. <clears throat> Look what just let us get this with this potato busted. The prophet said, whenever a woman harms her husband in this world, where in this world, where in this world, where. In this world, if you ask me why I'm repeating, because Muhammad he repeat three times, you know his people are very slow. So when a woman she harm her husband in this world, his wives among the whores in Jannah. You stupid son of Mutayas al Qadi, they are already in Jannah. Says. You must not harm him. May Allah destroy you. Here we go. The women are fighting now. The women in heaven are sharpening their nails. They want to attack the wife in earth because the wife in earth, she is harming the husband. Same on you, okay? May Allah curse you. May Allah destroy you. May Allah make you hummus. May Allah make you hummus. May Allah make you hummus, the wife of the man in the earth make you hummus. Please Allah make her hummus, she is very bad. You know, we are the virgin in Allah, we are here waiting for him. And then he, they say to him, you must not harm him, okay? May Allah destroy you, he is only passing by there, you are just a gas station there. <laughs> so what this guy is talking about? So he wanted to prove to us that the majority of women in, ha in heaven are actually in, are in, in, in gender are women. But those are the, the sex toys. And as you see, they are just horny waiting for you. Stop, stop hurting my future husband. He is so sexy and you know it. And imagine, guys, I don't, you, I don't want you to imagine something difficult. So I'm going to use something easy to imagine. All right. So... <clears throat> <laughs> all right, all right. So imagine, brother and sisters, that Zachar Naik, he had a fight with his wife. The virgin with the, are waiting for Zachar Naik, they see him as the most sexy and you know it. So Zachar Naik, he is speaking to his wife. I will tell you, and I want you one at a time. If you don't make cooking, when I come home, I'm going to divorce you. The wife, she said to him, you stupid Zachar Naik, if I turn the fan, I can throw you out. You are so skinny and anyone can kick you out of the house. My belly is 10 times bigger than yours. Don't. Don't try me. Zakir Naik, like Muhammad, he now need the help and the support of Allah. He said to her, listen to me carefully. If you try to harm me, Allah is my protector. And the Bril, and furthermore, all the angels. And not only that, but the Laden, and the believers, and all my audience and my fans on YouTube. And then during this conversation, the version in the heaven, they will say to Zakir Naik, or to his wife, May Allah curse you, you are hurting Zuzu. May Allah destroy you, leave Zuzu alone. 
May Allah make you shish kebab. May Allah make you ugly and break your nails. You are hurting Prophet Zuzu. Peace upon him. Don't touch his beard. This is our Zuzu. And then Zuzu, like, he was, mm -hmm, see? <laughs> see? <laughs> he Muslims, those women, they are talking to who? I mean, they are in heaven. Nobody can hear them. What the point of this conversation? Do you, do you think Muhammad is high hashish, you know? So the, the virgin in the heaven, they are saying, don't harm him, please. He is our husband. Don't harm him, you evil door. He is just passing by. And then what the heck of this conversation? The guy cannot hear it. The wives cannot hear it. And who can hear this conversation? How Muhammad he heard that? Don't hurt Zuzu. You hurt Zuzu? You are out of luck. The virgins in the heaven are watching over Zuzu. Zuzu, Zuzu, how you do? Shame on Muhammad, shame on you. You became a joke for everyone. And here we do make you barbecue. Zuzu, Zuzu, how you do? Shame on Muhammad, shame on you. You know what? Guys, I'm going to convert to Islam just for a few days, you know? And I want to see what's happening around me. My life will change. I will be a different person. You know? I will open a channel on YouTube praising Prophet Muhammad. And then the Muslim will swear, like they will swarm my channel. Imagine if a Christian prince, he said, I became a Muslim. What will happen? Man, those Muslims, they will go crazy. Takbir. Suddenly, the guy, Christian Prince, is the most wonderful person in the world. He is amazing. He is so good, man. This guy is so good. And uh, I will change my name and make it Zachar Naik, you know. <clears throat> By the way, the word, the last name of Zachar Naik is very bad in Arabic. Don't use it. It's an F word, literally. I'm telling you, it's the F word. Uh, you know, there is a, there is a, in, in, in Saudi Arabia, uh, the Pakistan, they decide to send an ambassador and he have a name. The Saudi and Arabian government, they refuse to refuse him. Not because of security, not because of he is bad person, he hates Saudi Arabia. No, 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 no. His name. His name in Arabic is, was the biggest, pe biggest penis. And then I ask myself, I mean, those people, when they choose their names, how in the world they choose such a name for their son? The biggest penis in Arabic. So imagine the Saudi TV now, they will go and they will introduce that today, the ambassador of Pakistan, Mr. Bigger, biggest Penis, he was shaking hand with the king of Saudi Arabia as an ambassador. Hmm. Uh, you cannot for a joke. What is that you cannot for a joke? You know, Kokani, Christian, now I know why my English is better than everybody. Alhamdulillah. What is what the heck with this English? It is a shame you cannot for joke. Okay, let me call Zakir Naik so he can explain to us what you just said. Teradam, 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 uh, Zakir. Christian Prince, hey, don't, don't call me. Hey, what, we have a question, serious question. A person in the chat says to me, you cannot for a joke. What does that mean? First of all, the word far means you are far away. And the word dog, it is not looking at yourself in the mirror. What the heck? How you solve the issue? Exactly. Allah, he inspired me and I can answer any question. Okay, your God have a son? I can answer that. Allah don't have a son. Uh, uh, why he cannot have a son? Allah cannot have a son. Did you say he cannot? Actually, he can. But I want to say that he don't want to have a son. Okay, why he don't want to have a son? Is that a problem? Okay, first of all, show me your faith and tell me your name and then I can debate you. Okay. <clears throat> Do we have any Muslim here would like to join us in Skype and say hello? <clears throat> oh boy.
Do we have any Abdul? Prophet Zuzu, peace upon him. Defend Prophet Mumu, peace be upon him. And they are sponsored by God, Lulu, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And by the way, disclaimer, don't do that at home. You see, we did show you the story of the guy who put a miswak in his anus. Don't do that at home. As you see, Allah will punish you and he will make you give birth after nine months. I mean, why nine months? I mean, does it take that long really, to, to, to make a rat? You will give birth for a rat. A child, he have a, have a, have a, he have a look like a rat. He have a head of a fish and he have an anus of a rabbit. And that is a mysterious for me. I want to know why in the world his anus, I mean, what is the point? I mean, they go into details into the anus. You know, there's a hadith, I don't know if I can find it in English. <coughs> uh, there's a Muslim who passed away. And you know, Islamic science, it always work. So this Muslim, he passed away, and uh, one of their sheikhs, he said he didn't, he's not dead. They said, how you know? He, you know, the Muslim, when a man, he died, they strip him from his clothes and he put him, they put him on the table, he's naked. So he put his finger in the anus of the man. And he told them he is not dead. And then after that, every single one in the funeral, before the funeral, they start placing their finger in the anus of the guy to prove that he is not dead. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy I mean the guy after he figured out later what happened to him that everyone in town he put his finger in his anus he might even kill himself <laughs> oh boy let me see if I can find the hadith in English or something this is like I actually I saw it once in the uh, translated to, into English, but I don't know if I can find it. Uh, let us see. Maybe we can get lucky. Okay. I'm looking for something. I found something else. Let us see. Hold on. I just found that shaitan, he came out from the anus of Adam. <laughs> I mean, I know this, I know this story, but I was looking for something else. I found different reference. Let us see this one. Hold on. Tafsir Ibn Kathir. That's deep. Tafsir Ibn Kathir. You know what? Let me see if I can find that in the English version of it. But I don't think in the English version they would say the same. Uh, always the, the, the English one, they take all those crazy stuff. You know, some people, they think like English Ibn Kathir is the same as Arabic Ibn Kathir. There's a huge difference, even the size. Go check how many pages. Uh, you know, I have I have the books of Ibn Kathir in my shelves. 
and I mean, all the books together of Ibn Kathir, they are not even, I don't know, 200, 300 pages in the translation. So let's go to chapter uh, 80, uh, 38, I think 3871, uh, uh, and see Ibn Kathir in English. And I don't think you will find it there in, in the English one. But we will try. <clears throat> uh, let's see. Yeah, I cannot find here anything. Okay, let us go to the front verse. All right. Go to a chapter of Ar Rahman. Yeah, you know, I, I know that always they will they will try to cover up and their translation never was honest, not even for not even once. So I don't think I will find it, but we will try. Let us see different website. We have it in front of us in Arabic, but I wanna find it in uh you know. If we go here, let us go to let us go to chapter two. See what we do required a lot of work. And because I don't prepare, you know, like I, I speak in a natural way, and we find things in the spot for you, uh, which is impossible for you to find. And that's why what we do is extremely important. And I hope people, they are taking reference, so later they will, uh, they will learn. Okay, you see, this is the same, the same, uh, I open Ibn Kathir in English, and now we go down here, Okay, let us see. Let us see what the word will be. Hmm. Yeah, as as I was expected, I cannot find it in Arabic. See, I'm looking in the English translation, the same page supposedly, but I cannot find it in, in, in the English one. <clears throat> yeah, nowhere to be found. But I can give you the link for the, the, the verses we are reading. Let us see, I have somebody. He is a Muslim, I guess, saying, take my call. Let us see. Mostly it's a bully person. Let us see. <clears throat> is not answering hello 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 
Hello? Well, your voice is very low. I cannot hear anything. Are you there? I cannot hear you. All right, well. Next time, maybe, you can call me. Anyway, here, in the front of us here, let us show you what we have here. So when Adam, so uh, yeah, Adam, when Allah, he created Adam, he, he made Adam stay for 40 years as a clay. So he's just a clay for 40 years. And then Shaitan, uh, he was like wondering what Allah he created, you know? So he entered into Adam and he came out from his anus. And then he said to the angels, don't be afraid of this. It's empty. And actually here, there is a problem in this story. He said, Inna rabbukumu samad. He said, your Lord is full and this one is empty inside. And here we ask the Muslims, Allah is full with what? You see, when the Muslim they say self-sustain, self-whatever, when they translate the word Samad, they get themselves busted. It says, your Lord is full, and this guy, Adam, which was a, 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 you know, a clay at that moment, he is empty from inside. Any Muslim can solve the problem? And not, you know, not to forget that the shaitan, he entered the buttocks, he entered from his mouth, and he came out from his anus. And this is how we, ex you know, explore. This is how we explore what is inside Adam and this is Ibn Kathir which I cannot find really in English you know this is a this is a chapter uh, 2 here verse number 34 but I could not find the interpretation in the English one. Maybe if I switch the page after it, let's see. Let us go. This is what this is. No. Okay. 34. Let us see. 35, 36, maybe. Okay. Until now, I see nothing. Let us try 37. Nothing too. So they took it off from the English translation. It's not even there. You know? And here, you know, you ask yourself, why in the world Muslims who they are translating, they take off from a book what is there? This is a Mika theory in English. If there is any Muslim can help us to find what is written in Arabic in the in the true book of a Mika theory in the English one, tell us why we cannot find it. And actually, if you read here. And you understand why why Muhammad is why why sorry the Muslim is trying to cover it. It says here, it's a totally fiction story. Uh, when Allah He says to the angels, uh, uh, when I breathe into him, bow down, and when He breathed into him His ruh, which is soul, it came into His head, and then. 
Adam, he sneezed, had shoe. And then the angels, they said, thanks to Allah. And then he said, Adam, he said, thanks to Allah too. Then Allah, he said to him, may Allah have mercy on you. May, may your Lord have mercy on you. And then when the soul enter into his eyes, he looked and he saw the fruits of heaven. And when the soul enter his belly, he desire food. So he tried to stand up before the soul reach his feet. So he can gra grab the fruits of heaven. And this is where Allah, he says, human being who was created ever hasty. Chapter of Al-Anbiya, verse number 37. Muslims, why we cannot find this is in, in the English translation? Anyone? The answer is very simple. You cannot trust any Islamic book translated by Muslims. The only way to get a book, it might be truthful, not necessarily, is to be translated by somebody. He have a good reputation to be truthful. He will not take a side. He will translate as it is, no matter what is the sentences. And I don't see that in any Muslims. The only Muslim actually you might think, see, they, they, they will translate that true translation is somebody he belonged to ISIS. Because you see, ISIS and Al-Qaeda and those people, they are proud about their belief, not like those Muslims in YouTube. So they don't mind to, to translate it as it is. But I don't think those people are meant to be translators. They are terrorists. This is the link. You can use Google Translation to see yourself. And this is Ibn Kathir. You know? I found you a link which is uh, like easier to open. Uh, and you can use Google Translation to translate. And after you use Google Translation, I think the best way, uh, search for the word sneeze. Sneeze. And then you can read like the line before it. You know, just like a click at translate, I will do that. And then search in English for the word sneeze or your, your language, whatever language it is, yours. So he sneezed. So the soul enter from his head, he sneezed. So I think the easiest way to search for the word sneezed and then you will find it and you will find the rest of the story here. And if you want to see where it says, where he entered into his anus, uh, you, you know, I mean, Google might not translate the word correctly, anus, the brahu. So when you search for the word sneeze, just go, you know, one line, two line, those lines are when shaitan, he entered inside him and he found him hello. He said to the angels, your God, Allah is full inside. This, this person is hello, so don't fear him. So it looked like a shaitan, he was doing like a, an explore mission so he can find out what is uh, Adam is made of, what he is, what he is really, you know? It's like, you know, exploring mission. Any question? <clears throat> All right, I think we have a good time together. Uh, uh, master, just to show you another uh, Muslim, another, another stupid Muslim. Master Splinter, he said, Paul the pagan, he forgot to wear his sunglasses, so he got abused by the light. Hey, uh, Mr. Uh, master, what if I show you the story of Paul in your book that when he saw Jesus, he got blinded? Is that fair, guys? Just to show you how stupid those people are. They make fun of things written in their books. <laughs> uh, 
Abdul, in the front of everybody, what if I show you that the story you are making fun of is written in your books? Do you accept the challenge? Abdul, potato, what if I show you that the story of Paul, he got blinded by the light of the Lord is in your book. And not only that, Paul after that, he repented to Jesus and he promised him to do jihad for his sake. Potato, don't play dead. Now they will play dead. <laughs> and now they will play dead. <laughs> I mean, anything you say, Muslims, I have your laundry. You are talking to Christian Prince. Anything you say to me is going to be used against you. This is not a Christian channel where you can make fun and you can go away with things. Here, here we have the garbage of your prophet, here. And now the guy is dead. When the funeral will be? Ask Joe Biden. Peace be upon him. You know the thing. Hey, Joe Biden, why this guy is not answering? You know the thing. What the heck? What does that mean? Well, the thing will explain the thing. What the heck? The guy, his name is Master, and he is a splinter too. I mean, he have a lot of things together. Paul is a pagan. The Quran and the Prophet never mention Paul, the pagan. I know the opinion you will show. Opinions. If, 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 if. Guys, it is an opinion, brother. It is an opinion. Okay, get lost. Right. It's an opinion of your scholars and the opinion of your prophet companions. And all of Islam is about opinion. Brother, can you tell me who is Israel? According to the opinion, he is Jacob. <laughs> Abdul, you just got a miswak in your anus and in nine months from now let me prophesy for you in nine months from now you will deliver a rat from your anus as the opinion say brother <laughs> you know what you see guys in the quran i want this this abdul to show me if in the quran we can find one phrase in the quran saying that muhammad was taken to heaven what he will say? The opinion says he went to heaven. The Hadith says the Quran never says so. Do you know that? Can you believe it? Why the stupid God of Islam, he never said that Muhammad, he went to heaven. And it's, you know, even he, he took him where? Nobody knows. It says Al-Aqsa. At night. Where is Al-Aqsa? It says, Glory to Allah, the one who take his servant for a journey by night. From the second most to the farthest most. Where is heaven? The Muslim, they will refute you saying, in the opinion. Uh, my friend, all of you Muslims can refute me, but are you refuting you? You remember Mimi Hijab when he, I called him? He said, Jabir, Jabir, this hadith is not accurate. I was quoting for him different book, stupid son of Muta. I was quoting for him different books and many interpretation. And this your books. So you cannot say you can refute me. Are you refuting yourself? This is your books. Muhammadan, those are your books. And your Fifi and your Mimi, if they can refute me, they will dare 
to call me and debate me, but they don't. They don't. Why? Because they knew they are no match. CP. This hadith is according to Shushu. Shushu, he said to Shushu. Shushu, he said to Mimi. Mimi said to Fifi. And everybody knows that Fifi is a liar. So this hadith is not valid. Is that true? If it's not valid, why it's in your book? So when a Muslim, he says they refuted you, well, you are refuting yourself. As long as you are sure you can refute me, let me call you. If you don't dare to call me, at least give me your Skype, I will call you. Is that fair, people? If somebody claimed that he can call me, he can refute me, how come you can refute me by talking to yourself? I mean, if I play chess, it doesn't matter if I win or, win or lose, I will never lose if I'm playing alone. We open our Skype for five, six hours. They have excuse I hang up on them. I will promise I will never, ever hang up on them. Can they promise the same? Be a man. Promise you will never hang up on me. I promise I will. And the one who hang up first, he is a loser. Deal? No bully. No name calling. Topic. Who dare? They don't. All Muslims can refute me. But the fact is that Paul is mentioned all over their book. And the Quran. Okay, I want to ask the Muslims when the Quran speak about the third and the most powerful messenger of Allah. Who is he? Muslims, who is he? Give me your opinion. What your prophet told you? Cowards. So look at this religion. Don't show us what is written in our books. We will refute you. Can you believe it? You are not refuting me. You cannot refute me. You are trying to refute yourself. You are being stupid now. And it's not one book I'm showing you, not two books, not three books, not four books, not five books. It's all over your religion. Who is a Muslim can show me that your prophet said that Paul is not a messenger of Allah? Anyone can show me? Look like your prophet never heard of Paul? Why the Muslims are obsessed with Paul? Huh? Al Qurtubi, Ibn Kathir, Al Baghawi, Sharh al Qadir, Endless. Any Muhammadan? All of them, they can refute me. And when you ask them, you are refuting what exactly? What is written in Ibn Kathir? That's mean you are not refuting me. That's in Ibn Kathir is a fraud. We are refuting al baghawi We are refuting this and that. So? Hmm. Any Abdul? Potatoes.
Yeah, even when they like they give us, uh, they say, uh, did you watch to weave a singer? To weave a singer, he gave a finger to Muhammad and he said the story of Mary to be a virgin is coming from the Greek mythology. Yet the, 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 the Muslims, because of their hate, they support the guy. I mean, the guy, he just told you that your God, Allah and Muhammad are liars. And the story of Jesus being born of a virgin from the Greek mythology and the, and the video is there. I made a video about it. Not a single Muslim get upset from the guy. Why? Because they want to use him. They are trying to use him against Christianity. Remember the guy when he was attacking this uh, story, he was attacking Christianity, you know, but he forgot or he is stupid to know that Mary in Islam, she was a virgin too. So when he accused the Christians of copying a, 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 like a mythology of the Greek, you just accused Muhammad to be a false person too. But the Muslim, they were not there to say to him, he's a Jew, they fear the Jews. Their God feared the Jews. They have a phobia from the Jews. Uh, if you check about ice and al-qaeda they want to kill everybody but they don't dare to get close to the jews they knew no they are no match even their quran says that the jews are people who fight behind the walls in fact the one who hide behind the walls is the muhammadan the Muslim, they say to you, don't you see they have a doom? This is a wall now. Well, just two days ago, three days ago, 40, 30 soldiers of the Israeli army went inside Gaza, all the way to the heart of Gaza. And all of Hamas fighters, they were hidden like rats. Where? Under the ground. You see them in when they have a speech, you see tens of thousands of Hamas holding guns. When 30 soldiers from the Israeli army go inside Gaza, they disappear. You don't believe me? I can show you the news. They disappear. They go. The same, you know, the same as in the south of Lebanon. Uh, you know, they speak about Hezbollah, the resistance, the, 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 you know, the fighter for Allah, the Mujahideen. The Israeli army landed in the highway in the in the in the Shia territory in Hezbollah territory. They captured the highest person after you know the, after the head of Hezbollah, the assistant, who was going to be the president of Hezbollah later or the leader. They captured him with a bunch of bodyguards. They put them in an airplane and they have dogs with them. Imagine they were walking in the highway with dogs. Those guys are going for a hunt, and all the terrorists in Beirut they disappear. After they took the sheikh, who is a terrorist, and they fly and they disappear from the sky, suddenly the terrorists, they are in the street and they have guns. What happened? Hello? <laughs> what happened? What happened, huh? Who is the one who hide? And they go and they hide between children and women. But the most funny thing I saw last week, uh, the uh, Jihad al-Islami, uh, they shot many missiles at the, at the at Israeli uh, uh, houses. And the funny is that half of them, they hit their own houses. Can you believe it? They shoot a missile, the missile go back to them. Look, actually I found the video, here we go, it's a short video. Here it says, 
actually i want to show you the video from a tv station sponsored by uh, hezbollah the guy he was like the camera is on and he says allahu akbar now the mujahideen they are shoot, shooting missiles uh at, at the at the Israeli and now it's going to the ocean it's going to uh, it's going to the ocean no 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 it's not going to the ocean it's going to the ocean and boom it fell in the top of their head and then the guy the the Muslim host of al Mayadi, which is a terror station the, he said to the camera guy move move the camera move the camera so people were not seeing where, 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 where the missile fell down I'm just trying to find it for you hold on uh, Al Jazeera TV and yeah. Huh. Read, read, read. Islamic Jihad rocket launches at Israel, misfires and landed in Gaza. They shoot missiles, 99% of them, they feel in their head. Look like Allah is not in your side, my friend. No, 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 not memory TV. This is new. This is a few days ago. No, no, I saw it. Actually, I saw it in a, in a TV owned by Imarat. You know, Imarat, uh, they hate, uh, they hate uh, Hezbollah. And this Sunni, you know, Sunni, they hate the Shia. So they were making fun of those Mujahideen because this is a Jihad al-Islami. They are Shia terrorists. They are Shia, Hamas or Sunni, you know? And actually, even in their TV, they say they were saying, where is Hamas? The Israeli army, 50, 60 uh, commanders, they went in. Everybody hide. Every single one of them, he hide. There's a program. It's I, I think it's, uh, I forgot the name. Hold on. Let me sorry for the name. I don't know the name of the guy who do the program. But I forgot what station, because I don't watch really Arabic TVs. Uh, Sky News, Sky News Arabic. Uh, guys, the title here, let me show you. This is Sky News Arabic, and the guy who's speaking is a Muslim, he's a Sunni. The Muhwar uh, al-Muqawama, uh, like the, the group of resistance, they call them the group of resistance, Hamas, Iran, Syria, etc. So he's saying, well, an Hamas. He's saying, looking for Hamas, where we can find Hamas. <laughs> and this is five days ago. So he is saying, okay, okay, you are a Mujahideen, you are fighters, you have tens of thousands of fighters and guns. How come we could not find you when the Israeli army get in? Where are you? Where are you, Mohammedan? Huh? Where are you? After they go in, and they do what they need to do. You don't find, the, I mean, after they go and they leave, and you know, here actually, this is Al Mayadeen. Okay, listen, this is, this is the, the part actually I want to show you. This is the part I want to show you from Al Mayadeen TV, which is prayed in Sky, uh, Sky News Arabic. So the guy from the terrorist station Al Mayadeen, which is sponsored by uh, uh, Hezbollah. He's saying, now, now they are shooting, the Mujahideen, they are shooting. Now it's coming, etc. And you know, he. Missiles now, missiles, missiles coming out. Now missiles, missiles are going to, uh, to the direction of the ocean, like the, is the sea. So they can cross and go and hit the, the Jews. Now, maybe, but, uh, Ahmad, Ahmad, now the missile is hitting, maybe. To, to destroy the gas uh, 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 storage house for the Israeli, maybe. Ahmad is hitting, and now the missile, guess where the missile fell down? Watch. Boom. The missile explode. 
the, 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 the guy is holding the camera now. He moves his hand to show them where the missile hit. Nahwal Bahra Ahmad, Nahwal Bahra, he's telling him, move the camera, don't go there, move. The missile fate and uh, fell on their head. Look, in their head. And then he will say to the guy, move the camera, move the camera, go up, go up. So this guy in the, in the in the sky in he is a Muslim. He's making fun of them. He says, "What the heck? It just fell in the top of you, and you are saying to the guy, change the camera direction so people would not see life on air. You stupid! They claim victory. It doesn't matter what happened to them. And this is what Muslim. They debate you. They lose. They are victorious. You know, they go in war with Israel. They lose. They are victorious. Allah Akbar. True story." And the funny is, the Muslim being taught by Muhammad that the Jews are coward and they fight you from behind walls. And then we find that all the Mujahideen, they are like rats going under the ground in the sewage. Who is the one is hiding? Here we go, the Israeli army go all the way inside Gaza and you hide. Why you don't go and fight? You have guns. They are not going inside with tanks. They are not going with tanks. They are not going inside with airplanes. They are going down with soldiers in the foot. Why don't fight them? That is the truth, my friend. Anyway. The truth will set you free. Okay, do we have any other question? Yeah, exactly. Even if the if the, the thing is a flying is a is a is a is a bird, the Abdul will insert it's a goat. All right? Any question, guys? And for the Muslims who can refute me, all of you can refute me. We cannot, we cannot, we cannot ignore that. The same way you can fight Israel. Once upon the time, the Muslims decide to do jihad against Israel, and they decide to throw the Jews in the ocean. And in Egypt, Syria, Iraq, Morocco. Every Muslim from everywhere coming, even uh, uh, you know, fighters from Pakistan, from Bangladesh, from whatever, come from around the world to fight the little tiny Jews in Israel. And then, guess what happened? The Jews and they took Jerusalem. Not only, not only, they defeat them, they took Jerusalem. The dream of the Jews to have back their land, they did. So, you know, they can say, somebody saying people, they die in a church, it says here because of electric, uh, fire in a church in Egypt. Well, we pray for them, what you can do. Yeah. Exactly. It is Israel land and the land, they will have it. And they have it. You see what uh, my, my fear regarding Israel, that Israel now have a lot of liberals and those liberals, wherever they go, they destroy everything. So I hope that the, the Israeli, they will not have a majority one day of liberals, you know, because the more you give land, they will not let you go. You see, like now, the the the, the silly 
ones, they agree with the American. If we give them Gaza, we will have peace. No, you will not. If we give him the other side of the country, we will have peace. No, you will not. You are just, you are just giving more land. And this is not their land. Can you tell the story how you went to a chat room and you went raising Muhammad but Muslim audience? Liar. Why am I telling the story? I mean, you know it already. Yeah, what he's saying, like once in a chat room in Paltok, I went to a Muslim room. They gave me the mic because they knew, like, I'm the enemy of Allah. Uh, so I took the microphone. I said, praise be to Allah. Prophet Muhammad was the most amazing man. He never lied. He never, and the Muslim, they were saying in the chat like crazy, liar, Christian prince, liar, you filthy liar, may Allah curse you. See, Prophet Muhammad never killed anyone. Liar, liar, liar. I mean, crazy people, they don't, they're not listening. They knew that this guy is a Christian prince. So whatever I say, they were saying a liar. So I was saying Muhammad is a great, wonderful man. They say liar, the whole chat room, not a single one. Hundreds of them. I say Muhammad never had sex with the children. Liar! Liar! You coward! You coward! You filthy! May Allah punish you! Prophet Muhammad never been accused of stealing underwear. Liar! Liar! <laughs> and then the admin, he took the microphone from me. He gave me a red dot. He says, you stupid. He was saying the prophet was a good man. You call him a liar. Are you even listening? This guy, he beat us even when he speak good about Muhammad. And supposedly he is a smart one, but it took him five minutes to figure out what I'm saying. I, if you are really smart, don't you notice? The admin of the chat room, supposedly, he is the he is the genius between them. He noticed. But after what? You know? Watch for the Imam Al Mahdi arrive. I don't know. I thought the Imam Mahdi is Isa. Is he? You Muslims, you have no idea what uh, you Muslims, you have no idea what you are saying. Who is Al Mahdi? The guy he says, "Watch, Al Mahdi will come." Is that the one who his mother she gave birth to him from her thigh? Is that the one? Hmm? Is it true there is a hadith says that the Mahdi is the Messiah? You say yes or no? Brother, say yes or no? <laughs> yeah, Abdul, you are talking to Christian Prince. I have all your laundry. So the one, the Mahdi you are talking about, according to your religion, he's hiding in a cave. He's a rat. In the same time, you idiot. You Muslims, you don't know who is this guy. Some, we are so confused. So you claim that the Mahdi is the Messiah. In the other hand, you claim that it's not. What's wrong with this religion? Here we go. Let us love together. I'm sure he never see this before, but this is why we are here just to laugh at you. Do you see it? There is no Mahdi except Isa, the son of Mary. Do you see it? Stupid religion. People, do you see it? I mean, those people, they, are, they fabricate stories and then their stories go against their own stories. So now if you ask this guy, who is Al Mahdi? Who is Al Mahdi? According to his comment now, Al Mahdi and Isa are two different people. But the Hadith says, no, it's one person. So Abdul, 
my Jesus will come and he will make your God shish kebab. I assure you that. Potato. Potato, 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 Do you know why they don't debate me? Because I have their laundry. Do you know what they don't debate me? Because I have their laundry. <laughs> the Mahdi from Fatima. Is that the one who Umar al Khattab he kicked her ass and she died? And you, Muslim Shia, you are you Shia? You claim that Jibreel was washing dishes for her, cleaning the house for her. Uh, uh, making zucchini for her. So where Jibril was when Umar al-Khattab, he came to her house and he killed her and he killed her baby in her belly. By the way, my mother told me, this is a long time story, a long time ago, because I'm a special person, that Jibril used to come and do laundry, you know? In the old days, they used to use diaper like for children. It's not like now, you know, you throw them in the garbage. So Zabriel, he told my mother, don't worry. He, let, let the CP, he do two poo, poo I will wash it. So I do poo, poo and I was doing it in purpose as much as I can. I made Jibreel hate himself. I do poo, poo he wash it. I do poo, poo he wash it. I eat more so I can do more poo, -poo. And I was laughing at him. Dying. I mean, have you ever heard that an angel of God is doing laundry and washing dishes and telling Fatima stories. Who is this Fatima? Muhammadan, you have a mental illness. The guy doing laundry to the women and he is washing dishes for her and he is telling her stories before she sleep. And then Amr al-Khattab, he, 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 he caused his, her death. Where, where was Jibreel to protect her? You know what? I'm doing too many hours. I think you guys are not even having time to watch my previous videos. So maybe soon I will start like slowing down in the in the video what do you think guys what do you think hmm? what do you think too much videos for you to watch it's too much and many long hour so i'm trying to i will try to shorten it i'm going to order like a watch or something i will i will i will, uh, I will set alarm in my uh, phone like when i arrive like the, uh, i will make a very short video i will make the maximum eight hours you know what do you think guys and I will be waiting for uh, Jibril to come and tell me it's time to go. Yeah, yeah, go on. Man, you are not a man. You, you, you are a rabbit and a rabbit anus. If you are a man, call me. Get out of here. You and your Maddie. No, no, I will make it short. And I'm, I'm, I, will, I will make it like eight hours maximum. You know, very short. And then, like, if I want to make it longer, I will go, like, 12 hours or maybe 13 or maybe 14, you know? It's like the story of the people of the cave. Like, they said to Muhammad, how many they are? So, Muhammad, he do not know the answer, and he's an idiot of the village. He says, some, they say, they are uh, three, and their dog is number four. And some, they say, they are four, and their dog is number five. And some, they say, they are five, and their dog is number six. And some, they say, they are seven, and their dog is number eight. <laughs> Is stupid Muhammad give us the answer man and until now we are waiting for the answer until now Muhammad do not know uh, about Shia yeah we can make a special program about Shia why not maybe next time we will see anyway guys I think it's time to go it's already how many hours now two hours and 45 minutes and 29 seconds was like hell on Muhammad mean Muhammad he hit me so if you want to download my videos and you think they are long, you can, and I think they are long. Come on, they are long. I mean, I, even this one need an argument about it. So what you can do, you can cut the video, make it a topic, 
at the moment. Like I spoke about uh, the guy who put the miswak in his anus. Make a video with that title. Uh, we spoke about uh, Somerville. Make a video, cut the you know, cut it and make that topic by itself. So cut it pieces, and that will make you have more videos in your channel and it will make it easier for people to watch and to download or to share. So I want to say thank you guys for being here. Remember, knowledge is power, and this is why they fear us because we have the we have the truth, we have the knowledge, and the Muslim they will be so brave only when you are ignorant. They will not step one step forward to a person who is occupied with faith and knowledge. So always occupy yourself with the truth, and the truth will set you free. And always take notes and learn, because nothing powerful as education. And education, if it's used for the right purpose, it's a powerful education. As in the book of Psalm, where it says in 127, that the builders, they are building in vain. Why? Because they don't have God in their side. So don't build in vain. Learn so you can spread the truth. Except the Lord build the house. The labor is in vain. That build it. Except the Lord de keep the city. The watchman cannot watch it. He was watching it in vain. So, Keep the Lord in your side, and the Lord, he says, read the books. And we are here to share with you the books, our books, and they are stupid books. So we can fight their lies by their own books. And this is why they fear what we do. If I am here just to speak about the gospel, trust me, the Muslim, they will not consider that any threat for their religion, because they will say, well, we don't believe in this book anyway. But when we show them their books, that is the painful thing for them. It is their books. And when you deny your books, you will look like an idiot. And people will laugh at you. And when you say this hadith is da'if, you are proving to us again that Islam is invalid and Islam is full of fiction and stupid stories because why it is there if it is invalid and who is the one who decide what is bad or is not and if Islam is not only the Quran it's Quran and Hadith why Hadith is not preserved and not only that we find that even the Quran which is supposedly preserved which is not is full of stupid stories don't forget if you have hail hail is coming from mountains in heaven and this is a true story so actually I'm going to go to the mountain which is in heaven I'm going to put some TNT in it. I will break it pieces. And I, you know, uh, uh, I'm going to destroy those mountains. So we will not get hurt again ever. Because Allah, he will use the hail uh, to hit us in our head, uh, which is coming from the mountains, brother, in heaven. And this is in the preserved Quran, brother. You know? And the Muslim, they try to fix it. So look what they say. He sent down from the sky hail, and they put between two brackets like mountain. This is say like this says from mountains, and the Abdul now he tried to cover his ass, so he say, or or, what the heck, or there are in heaven mountains of hail them from there where it stands and the what the what the, what the heck, you see how they duct tape, chapter twenty four verse number. 43 and you go to their interpretation you show it to them they will say it doesn't say that cb we don't agree with the opinion cb this opinion was valid for centuries and centuries and centuries and their prophet is the one who taught it and then they don't agree with the opinion cb you know when the muslim you show him something in his book you feel like you just shot him with electricity you know it doesn't say that cb you know what, what the heck? Uh, uh, okay. So it says here, He sent down from the heaven mountain wherein is hail to he punish, brother. Man. This is Ibn Abbas. Man, 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 man. And this is C. The other one, Ajlalain. 
and he sent down from the heaven out of mountains min jibalin min is extra that they're in in the heaven fatha you know they are explaining supposedly like they're using grammar you know and then he says he sends from mountains in heaven heal brother this is pure science it's true and now if you have the weather man is saying something to you not true get him busted call the tv station tell them you stupid you idiot muta boy this is not true hail is coming from mountain in heaven go watch the movie avatar do you see avatar the guy with the green tail the story is true and those are mountain flying in the sky and they are hail and Allah break them pieces and he send them on us and this is how we hurt our cars and our head to punish us and thank you very much for being here uh, uh, let me pray to Allah to protect the anus of any Muslim from the suwak for the suwak can cause a very bad damage and you can make you have a rat after nine months so please be careful with suwak respect the suwak brother if you have a siwak at home, put him in the chair, make him wear a tie, show him respect, you know, give him a good greeting, assalamu alaikum when you see the miswak, and when you put it in your mouth, be sure it's your mouth, because some people, their mouth and their anus look the same. You know what I'm saying. Thank you. Uh, they expose the lies of Muhammad, and uh, learn how to be tough, on this cult and tough mean to be bold to say it as it is not as they want not politically correct being politically, politically correct is an illness is a weakness if somebody is hiding something You've been forced to say something. So if you are a Christian, say things as it is. Yes, we love the Muslims. It doesn't mean we will let the Muslim die and go to hell. Loving the Muslims is saving the Muslims. It's not the opposite. So when somebody, he says to you, uh, that you are being rude, this is not how a Christian should be speaking. A true Christian is the one who say things as it is, and that will make it truth for sure.